Okay, section 9.2, simplifying radical expressions. Let's simplify each of the following. So when we see this radical symbol written around a 36, that means to think of a number that when multiplied with itself would give you 36, and one answer to that would be 6. Now if we come down here and actually look at the definition of a, that symbol, it's called the principal square root, and it says if a is a non-negative number, then the square root of a is the non-negative number we square to get a. That's kind of, I don't know, some technical wording. Um, and then we call the square root of a the principal square root of a. Uh, the word principal we often don't use. We just say the square root of 36. But it really is the principal square root of 36, which means the non-negative answer. Uh, when you want to check that this is right, the check on your work is to take 6 and square it, and you get 36, so you're like, aha, I got it. But it turns out if you took negative 6 and squared it, you would also get 36. So negative 6 is a square root of 36 as well, but this symbol, the principal square root, means we want the positive answer, the positive number that if you square it, you get 36. So when you see that symbol, you would never give the negative answer. Now if you want the negative root, what you do is you put the negative out front, let me write this just oh so slightly differently. I'm going to put the negative and then I'm going to put parentheses around the square root of 169 just to kind of show the order of operations that we're doing. So we're thinking about what is the square root of 169. We're thinking what's a number that if you multiply it with itself will give you 169. And maybe you would have that memorized, maybe you wouldn't. It is one that I have memorized, but uh, let me just kind of do some trial and error on that. Is it 12? Well, if I take 12 and I square it, do I get 169? No, I get 144. How about if I take 15 and I square it? That's 225. So 12 was too small, 15 was too big, the target's 169. So how about 13 squared? That is 169. So if 13 squared is 169, then the principal square root of 169 is positive 13, and then just applying that negative, the answer would be negative 13. So you don't need the parentheses on this, but I just wanted to show you kind of the idea of what do we do with that negative. It just waits out front until we're done with the principal square root, and then we would put it on. This one can be a tricky one, but people want to do things like cancel the two negatives, but the square root really blocks you from doing that. So you really have to think of it like this. So this negative is just going to wait, and we have to think of what is the square root of negative 16. And a lot of people think that they've got it, like they know how to do that, but there really is no answer to that. The two things that make sense is maybe 4, but if you square 4, you don't get negative 16. So then people think, oh, okay, then how about negative 4? But if you square negative 4, you also get positive 16, just like on the 4. And if you think about it, there's no number that if you square it, produces a negative. So the square root of a negative is not a real number. So that's something we have to remember. When you're simplifying square roots like 36 or 169, it's good to kind of have some perfect squares memorized. So I'd encourage you to take a list of integers like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, let's go 10, 11, 12, 13. And then think about if you square those, what do you get? So the list of squares now would be 4, 9, 16, 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, and as we just saw, 13 squared is 169. If you have a list of things like this memorized, then it'll help you to recognize square roots because the square root of 144 is 12, the square root of 81 is 9, the square root of 49 is 7. So if you can quickly think of what you get when you square an integer, it helps you to go backwards. All right, so we're going to look at some other versions of simplifying square roots. And this is when the thing underneath the radical symbol is not a perfect square. Perfect square is something you know the square root of. Like 81, square root of 81 is 9, so that's a perfect square. Square root of 32 I don't know a number that when I multiply it with itself gives me 32. 32 is not on this list of perfect squares. 
So we need to figure out a way that we can still simplify that sum. So what we use is this product property for square roots that says if you're taking the square root of a product, like a times b under the root, you can separate it into two separate square roots, square root of one factor times the square root of the other. So how's that helpful? Well, if you take something like the square root of 32, where you don't know the answer to that, you can think, but yeah, 16 goes into that. So I can rewrite 30, square root of 32 as the square root of 16 times 2. And then according to this property, I could split that up into the square root of 16 times the square root of 2. And in a way, that seems worse, right? I just had one square root here, and now I have two of them. But I didn't just split this up any old random way. I made sure that one of the numbers I thought about was a perfect square from my list here. So that way I know the answer to that piece. The square root of 16 is what's the number that when you multiply it with itself gives you 16, and the answer to that is 4. And the square root of 2 is not on my list. I don't know the answer, so that part stays in there. But it's still considered simplified if you take something that was under the radical and you can't get the whole number to come out of there like we did with the square root of 36 we just had an answer of 6 then you try and get at least part of it out the biggest part that you can and the way a number escapes from a square root symbol is if you know the answer so what number times itself gives me 36 4 so there it is and it has escaped the radical what number times itself gives me 2 I don't know so it's stuck inside so let's try another one so 2 times the square root of 135, and we're supposed to simplify that. So what I want to do is split that up. Now, the first thing that jumps into my head is that 5 goes into 135, and I know that because it ends in a 5. But that's not necessarily useful because 5 isn't on my list of perfect squares. So that's only useful if 5 goes in a number of times that is a perfect square. So let's check that. 135 divided by 5 is 27. That is not a perfect square, so that's not that helpful of a thing. So what I want to do is start looking at my list and thinking, do any of these go in? So is 135 divisible by 4? You don't need your calculator to answer that question, actually, because uh, no odd number is ever divisible by an even one. So how about 9? Is 135 divisible by 9? Yes. So that's useful. It's only useful to split up one of these numbers if one of the factors is a perfect square. And we just saw that 9 went into 135 15 times, so I can split 135 up as the square root of 9 times the square root of 15. And that's useful because then I can separate that into its own radical, and I know the answer to the square root of 9. They're really asking me what number times itself gives me 9, and I know the answer. It's 3. So that makes it escape from the square root. What number times itself is 15? I can't think of a number like that. I can think of ways to split up 15, like 3 times 5, but it only works if it's the number times itself. So square root of 15, I don't know how to simplify, so that is stuck underneath. And then the 2 times 3 are both out and multiplied together, so I can make that a 6 times root 15, and that's considered simplified. So it's real important that you remember if you're trying to simplify a radical, when you go to split this up into two factors, um, splitting this up in a way that doesn't involve a perfect square is not going to be useful to you. You've got to make sure one of the numbers at least is a perfect square. So on the 135, I didn't do 5 times 27 because neither 5 or 27 was on my list of perfect squares. But 9 times 15 is useful because 9 is on my list of perfect squares, and that means I know it's square root. All right, so let's go ahead and head on to the next page. So we just looked at simplifying some square roots, and here's a summary of what it means to simplify a square root. So to simplify a square root in which it is easy to determine the largest perfect square factor of the radicand, what you want to do is write the radicand as the product of the largest perfect square factor that you can think of, and then another number, and then apply the property of square roots to that. So let's just try that a few more times. So the square root of 75, we want to make that 4 times a product underneath the radical, where one of the numbers in that product is a perfect square. So I'm going to bring in my list of perfect squares and try and think, do any of these go into 75? Does 4 go into 75? No. Does 9 go into 75? No. Does 16? No. Does 25? Yes. 25 goes into 75 three times. 
it's only useful to split that number up if one of the factors is a perfect square. And then we can split that into two separate radicals. We can take the square root of the 25. The square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 3, I don't know the answer to, so that's stuck inside. But when these two have both come out, we can multiply them together. So that's 20 root 3, and that would be my answer. And I'm just going to show you one other variation on this problem real quick that I'm going to use on the next few. Once I see that that can be split up as 4 times the square root of 25 times 3, I often will skip this step and I'll just think of these separately. So I'll write down the 4 and then I'll say what's the square root of 25 and I know the answer, 5, so that makes it escape from the radical. What's the square root of 3? I don't know, so that one's stuck inside and then I can go to here. So that's how I typically do these and that's how I'm going to do the next couple. All right, let's leave this list of perfect squares in view and move on to another one. So 3 times the square root of 98. So what numbers from here go into 98? Not 4, not 9, not 16, not 25, not 36. Uh-oh. Uh that seems like nothing. Oh, wait, there's one more. Square root of... Uh, 49 would work. That square of 49 is 7, and 49 does go into here twice. 98 is 49 times 2. So now using this kind of method right here, I have the 3 out front already. What is the square root of 49? 7. What is the square root of 2? I don't know. So notice when I know the answer, it comes out of the square root. When I don't know the answer to the square root, it stays inside. And 3 times 7 are both out, so I can multiply that to get 21 times root 2. Okay, let's try one more. So the square root of 605 this time. So on the last one, even though I stumbled, I actually knew from the beginning that 49 was a perfect square that went in here. When I look at this right away, I actually can't think in my head quickly what 605 has that is a perfect square factor. So. I could just try and divide some things uh, into 605 and see see what works. So I'll try and skip things that I can that I know that doesn't work. No even ever goes into an odd. And 9 won't go in because if I add up the digits I get 11 and a little trick with divisibility by 9 is if the digits would have to add up to something divisible by 9 and 6 plus 5 is 11 not divisible by 9. There's an even one that so that won't work. Uh, 25 won't work because the number doesn't end in two digits divisible by 25. No even would go in. 49 I don't think goes in, but we can try. No, nope, that doesn't go in. No even one. How about 81? Nope. And then 100, 121. That one did work. Okay, so I didn't think of it off the top of my head, but I just kind of went through my list of perfect squares till I found something. So it turns out 605 is 121 times 5. And the square root of 121 is 11, so that number escapes. The square root of 5, I don't know, so that's stuck. These two are both out, so I multiply them together. 55 times the square root of 5. I believe they ask you to check some of these on the calculator. So one thing you could do to check these is put in your initial answer and your end answer and see if they're the same. So let's try that. 5 times the square root of 605 is 122.9837388. And 55 times the square root of 5 is the exact same thing. So it does look like we've done that successfully. Now you don't want to go to a decimal as your actual answer unless they ask you to do an approximation on the calculator. That will come up at times. Um, if they ask you to simplify, they just want you to get the biggest perfect squares out of there that you can and then write an answer with as much outside as, as possible, and whatever's left inside, you leave. All right, that's going to wrap up section 9.2.